Hello everyone, this is YLAM here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the major firmware update for the XH1. So we're moving to version 2.0. There's a lot of enhancements. There's also a lot of new features. So there's a lot to talk about. The XT3 also got a major firmware update, but we're not going to be talking about it for this video because we have a lot to cover just on the XH1 alone. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it's now time to actually update the firmware. As always, all you have to do is hit the display button when you turn on the camera and it will bring you to this menu system. We're going to go ahead and update the camera body first, but then we're going to actually have to update all of the camera lenses. This is something that's really important and also keep in mind if you're the type to actually rent a lot of lenses, you're going to have to make sure that the lenses are also up to date in their firmware. Alrighty, the camera body is now done, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn it off. Keep in mind that the lens firmware is actually different from the camera body firmware, so you're going to have to download those separately. So we're going to go ahead and check this 10 to 24. We're going to go to the lens. As you can see, I do need to update that. So we're going to go ahead and start updating that one. So I'm going to go ahead, do the 10 to 24, and then I'm going to switch out to my 18 to 55s. I have two of them. You go through the same process. Again, the 18 to 55 firmware is separate from the 10 to 24. So you're going to have to download all of the separate firmwares and then make sure everything's up to date before we actually do anything else. One of the major enhancements is the increased stabilization of a couple of lenses. Specifically, I have two lenses that I want to test out because I do own them. This is the 10 to 24 f4 and this is the 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4. They should have an additional two stops of image stabilization, so I definitely want to check it out for video. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm going to do a before firmware update test and then an after firmware update test. This is kind of unscientific, but it's a way to kind of just notice the difference and it's going to be shot on the same day. So as you can see, this is a test of the 18 to 55 pre and post firmware update and also the 10 to 24 pre and post. The 10 to 24, I kind of set it right in the middle at 14 millimeters. It looks pretty good for vlogging situations. And of course, the 18 millimeters is set at 18 millimeters. Didn't really know how to actually show this to you in the best way possible. So I figured I'd just show all four of them and then you can just replay it to see if you can see a difference between pre and post for image stabilizations. But on the X-H1, the image stabilization was already pretty good in the first place. It does seem to be a little bit better, but that's going to be subjective for people. And this is a very unscientific test. So moving on to the next test, this is actually to test panning uh, on the firmware notes. They did say that they did improve panning to where it's going to be less jittery. This is something that I have seen in other videos, but I don't really use the X-H1 much for panning. So this is me doing a quick pan on both sides just to see if it actually improves. You'd be the judge of that. But like I said before, I don't really do much panning. If you want a specific test, please leave in the comments below and I'll definitely take a look at it and I will try to get a video out specifically for that going to go ahead and zoom in to 24 and you let me know if there's a difference on that so here's 24 let me go ahead and refocus on that and then I'm just going to pan around and you be the judge on whether or not you see any jitteriness to it but again I don't do much panning so I'm not really good judge of this there are two new display features that can be super helpful to you one of them is right here in which it displays the Kelvin if you actually have it selected. One thing that is interesting to note is that if you go into your white balance, if you set it to auto, what will happen is that this will disappear. It doesn't actually say auto. So if you have it in auto white balance, you actually will never see that icon. Just keep that in mind. But the second you actually choose a custom white balance or one of the presets like this one more time it'll actually show up so that you can actually see what you're on. This is something that's super useful for both photo and video, just as a kindly reminder, but if you're in auto, it actually does not show up. Now, another feature that they actually put into the display, and this one I think is more useful, is that if you're using external power, when you plug in external power to your anchor, 
the external power icon will show up right here and as you can see now I'm actually drawing power from an external power supply this is something very useful for anybody who you know doesn't quite know whether or not the external power supply is using once you unplug it of course it'll go back to battery power as you can see it doesn't affect the camera it doesn't power cycle what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick test we're gonna go ahead and put this in video mode and we're going to start recording and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug it in and as you can see it's drawing power while it while it's actually recording and then I'm going to unplug it and as you can see it doesn't actually stop the video recording this is something that's super useful to know so that if you're actually exchanging out power supplies just because you're in the middle of a really long shoot then you can do that without affecting your video recording the last thing to cover on this firmware update is the 4 gig limit or the lack thereof. As long as you use 64 gigabytes and above SD cards, you will no longer have a 4 gig limit. Went ahead and did a simple test. I recorded 4K at 15 minutes and I got around just under 11 gigabyte file. So everything works great. This is going to really help my workflow because I only have to have one file to deal with. I can process the entire file and then cut it up as needed. So this is something that's super useful and I'm really glad that the XH1 got this early. Unfortunately, that also means that I'm going to have to upgrade from my 32 gigabyte cards to my 64 gigabyte card. So that is an expense that I'm going to have to go through, but it is well worth it, especially if you're recording video. If you're only doing photos, obviously this enhancement isn't really going to affect you, but for anybody that's doing video, this is a very welcome change and something that's going to be really neat to use for the X-H1. That's all I have to report for this firmware update. If there's anything specific that you want me to test or go through, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll try to do that in a separate video. Hopefully this has been useful to you and I will see you in the next video. Keep in mind the X-T3 will be coming out Friday. I will do a full firmware update video on that one on Friday. This one's just for the X-H1.